So let's start from the very beginning. You actually grew up in a real musical family. Somewhat, yeah. Both your parents were professional musicians? No. My mom was a singer. She had a little record deal on Cameo Parkway Records, and when she met my father, she decided she wanted to be a housewife. And so she okay. changed up. Yeah. And your uncle, I think? My uncle was a keyboard player, organ player, for a group called the Vagrants. Yeah. Okay. Well, in New York, they used to open up for like the doors and okay. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So, I mean, do you think that growing up in that type of environment kind of influenced you to start making music? Um, somewhat, yeah. It's funny, I, I remember as like a six-year-old kid, my uncle, who became more of a religious singer in his old age um, and left the rock and roll world, he was playing and singing one of his songs. And I was like six, and I remember listening to it, and I was thinking to myself, this word should rhyme with the next line and this and that. And, and just some kind of, I had like, I was critiquing a song at six and I remember it and it stuck with me and I was like, I should be a musician. And ever since that point, I was just always obsessed with it. Yeah. So when did you really start like putting music together? At like 11, 12. 11 or 12? Yeah. I mean, were you taking music lessons at the time or just? No, I just was listening to my favorite records and I taught myself how to play those songs. On a uh, keyboard? Yeah, I would take a cassette recorder and set it up on the piano bench. And just slowly but surely, it led to a system of learning how to play chords and stuff. So you were self-taught? Yeah. And at 11 or 12 years old, you started replaying the different songs? Well, at 11, 12, I was already like writing songs. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like music songs. And so you're like a child prodigy. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah, my so, parents used to tell me like, yo, stop playing the piano, go outside and play ball with the kids. And they were tired of hearing me banging on the keys. So had you ever taken piano lessons? Or I took music like lessons? one or two lessons and it wasn't for me. Okay. And plus my family, we really couldn't afford it and to get driven to the lesson and all that stuff. So. Okay, so you just said, fuck it, I'm just gonna yeah. start doing it myself. Yeah. Okay, so as a teenager, were you working with any groups or just messing around in your bedroom by yourself? Um, I was all of the above. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I started, it's so funny, when I was like 13, 12, 13, I joined a New Edition cover band <laughs> with these five dudes that were like New Edition. And, okay. Yeah. And you guys would redo like Mr. Telephone Man? And yeah. <laughs> Mr. Telephone, yep. Now you ended up actually dropping out of high school at one point. I dropped out of school in ninth grade. Ninth grade. Yeah. That's like right at the beginning of high school. Freshman year. Yep. Okay, like why did you drop out? Um, to be a musician. So you were like, okay, this music shit is I moved to doing. Philly with my dad, and I wasn't vibing with the school, and I just kept cutting school and going down into the city. And slowly but surely, I hooked up with The Roots, and it was a wrap. Like how did you actually hook up with The Roots? Uh, this guy, Richard Nichols. Um, he was managing, we were called Square Roots at the time. Right. Uh, they were called Square Roots, and... Uh, uh, I got in the group. You know, it was so the Square Roots was the original name of the Roots? Yeah. Right. Is it, I think I remember even little flyers and stuff like that. Yeah? Yeah. And um, we would, uh, you know, set up on South Street, borrow power from like stores and play live on the street, do block parties and crazy. So you, you were the, the white keyboard player in the Roots yeah. pretty much. It was like an all black group. Yeah. And you were like the token white dude yeah. in the group. Yeah, and I was writing a lot of the music. Uh, yeah. So who was actually writing most of the music? You and Questlove? I, I was. And he would do the drum patterns and, you know. Okay. At that time, yeah. And, we, you know, together we, we, uh, we did the music part and we had uh, Malik B and, and Tariq Trotter. You know, Quest, uh, uh, you know, Black Thought. Well, The Roots was the first group that actually you were involved in that actually popped off. Yeah. So how did it feel to be part of that? You know, because they great. had a major label deal, they had a hit song, they had the whole, not, yeah. uh, Do You Want More, like the, the, the yeah, first album, right? did that whole album. You did the whole album. Yeah. You produced it. Yeah. And it popped off. Yeah. I mean, so you were now, did it go platinum? Eventually it did, yeah. Eventually, but initially what, it like went gold? Yeah. Okay, so here you are, 18, 19? Yeah. And you sitting on a gold record that you put together. Yeah, 17, 18. Yeah. 17, 18. Yeah. How did it feel? Felt good. It didn't translate to much money, but Why still not? felt good. Because, we have, you know, it's a group, five people, and, 
this, that, the other. I mean, eventually, I mean, there was more money than I was used to having, but it wasn't like a fortune. Um, all it did was really was change our tastes into nicer things that we couldn't afford. <laughs> okay. So you're now part of the, the Roots as the, the main producer and the keyboard Not player. Not producer, just keyboard player slash writer. Slash writer. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, was it the second album that uh, You Got Me came out on? Third. Third album. Yeah, okay, so you were, you were rocking with The Roots this whole time through every album? Through every album, and then uh, I quit after our, um, um, you know, first release on, uh, on uh, the Do You Want More album on Geffen, and they did Illadelf Half-Life. Um, I left the group because I just, something snapped, and I just decided I wanted to be a producer, and I didn't want to be remembered as the white guy who plays keyboards for The Roots. Right. Now, how did uh, You Got Me come together? Well, you Got Me came together. Um, I made the track, the whole thing, um, and I was working with Jill Scott. We were, you know, doing stuff for her, and that's what that was for. Quest Love came by my studio at Sigma Sound in Philly and heard it and said, we got to have this for the roots. And um, threw Eve on it. Um, and then um, at the very last minute, Geffen Records took Jill off of the record and put Erica Badu. At the time, Erica Badu was popping. Yeah. yeah she, she had just did. come off a monster album, and you know she was like the, the face of R&B at that time. Yeah. Um, was Jill upset over that? I think so, slightly. <laughs> but she still proved herself as a writer. I loved her version of it. It was amazing. Do you think, uh, I mean, from your point of view, you think her version was better than the Badu version? They were both good. But Jill wrote it, so she had a better take on it. Yeah, fair enough. So then you quit The Roots. Yeah. And you were like, okay, now I'm a I quit The Roots before you got me. Um, but I still maintained a relationship with them. And I was doing these um, open mic sort of... Uh, women in music series called Black Lily that we would have every week and I was okay. playing keys for that still and still trying to stay on the scene but trying to develop my career as a producer. Okay. And that Black Lily, I uh, hope I'm not going too far, but um, that was what led to me meeting Dr. Dre. Really? Yeah, because um, we were doing these Black Lilies literally every Sunday in New York at this um, place called The Wetlands mm -hmm. and then um, there was one in California. I had never been to California at the Martini Lounge. And Eve was there. She happened to be there and ran up to me and said, yo, I just got signed to Dr. Dre on Aftermath, blah, blah, blah. It's before Rough Riders. Mm -hmm. And she hooked me up. And it was, a, it was a history. We just decided like, fuck it, you know? When we was able to see each other face to face on some grown man shit, it was like, you know, I ain't got no beef. I don't have no problem. You ain't got no problem. Fuck it. And that's just what it was. Stripping, getting my own money and leaving. How was I gonna leave if I only made $200 every week? Ain't no way. So basically stripping saved your life. Yeah, you know what? It really did though. 